So today I want to read to you two verses from the book of Jude. And this, these are the two verses that tell you that these men who call themselves grace preachers are false teachers. And Jude says exactly that. He says it. He describes them exactly as they describe themselves. So hang on to your hats, because the King James and the New King James both, again, have concealed the truth of the testimony of God by changing certain words that are there by God's will in the Bible. And these men who have translated it, so-called translated it, have mutilated it and concealed God's counsel. All right, so here we go. This is the rooted word translation, common English, of Jude, verse 3 and 4. Loved ones, making myself to be writing to you for all speed, all about the common salvation, I hold up an arm to constrain, to write to you, calling alongside, to be led together to struggle to the persuasion, the faith, the persuasion, at one time given alongside to the terrifyingly clean ones. That's us. But given to the terrifyingly clean ones in the past. For some human beings sink down into alongside. Those having been written into that distinguishing judgment for decision, forward to from previous times, irreverent ones, irreverent ones, those placing the cheerful graciousness of our God amidst incontinence and silencing the sole remaining absolute ruler, God, and our Lord, Jesus Christ. Now, you caught that word incontinence. That is a very important word that is translated in different ways in the King James and the New King James. Lewdness, lasciviousness, and some other ways. But literally it means incontinence, not able to contain yourself. Like physical incontinence that some people have when they can't help but urinate. They can't stop it. They can't have no bladder control anymore. Maybe they never had, maybe because of cancer, who knows why. But somehow they're incontinent. Or it could be either that or poop. But they're incontinent. They cannot hold in what they should hold in, and it comes out. Okay? And so that's what they say. That's what, uh, that's what God says they are like. They cannot stop sinning. They have no fortitude. Remember fortitude down here. Fortitude of the mind. Remember I told you the Bibli in the biblical concept of the body, the organs and the places in the body have certain uh, importance. Not all of them, just certain ones. Like the kidneys or the reins for controlling the liver. And the liver is the seat of the will or intentions, the willpower. And then the, the abdomen here, just below your ribs, that's where you have your, your fortitude of mind. Your mind is pulled together to determine to do what your liver has decided to do, what you've decided in your liver to do. So this, these are the, that's how the ancients in biblical times saw the body and the soul. They were tied together in these places for those purposes. So their incontinence means they have no fortitude of mind, and so they are sinning, and they can't stop. Now notice, it says, those placing the cheerful graciousness of our God amidst incontinence. They're excusing away their incontinence with the cheerful graciousness of God. I'm sorry, but that's what God said. 
I'm not sorry for that. But I'm sorry for you. If you don't believe it, you don't receive it. You can't accept what it literally says in the Bible. Now, you know, the King James and the New King James gets it close, sometimes right on sometimes, but there are quite often times where they completely obscure it. And this is one of those. And by clarifying it from the actual Bible, you can see now that those men who call themselves grace preachers or grace believers, and when you ask them, well, have you stopped sinning? They say, no, no one can stop sinning as long as they're in the body. I can't help but sin as long as I'm in the body. They're excusing away their incontinence, their refusal to use the fortitude of the mind to stop sinning. They're excusing away their incontinence by referring to God's grace. It's an abuse of grace. Paul already talked about it earlier, too. You know that. We don't use grace as a license to sin, do we? It's the same concept. They're preaching grace and also preaching that no one can stop sinning. That's exactly what it says right here. Those placing the cheerful graciousness of our God amidst incontinence. And it tells the consequence of this is that they stop listening to both God and Jesus Christ. It says so. Those placing the cheerful graciousness of our God amidst incontinence and silencing the sole remaining absolute ruler, meaning that they refuse to accept rulership of anyone over them, and especially God. And silence, by, by placing the cheerful graciousness of God amidst incontinence, they are silencing the sole remaining absolute ruler, God, and our Lord, Jesus Christ. They're false teachers. That's what Jude is all about. He's introducing the book right now and the topic of false teachers, and he goes into it and describes them in detail. And these details absolutely describe these men and these men and women, these teachers, these preachers, evangelists, but also the men and women who follow them. And if you're one of them, you need to flee. You need to fly away as fast as you can from them. Because you're in the camp of false teachers. And you are going to be condemned along with them. May the Lord bless you as you seek Him with all your heart.